Six nine got beat up at the LA Fitness like a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. And I sent it to Sean because I was like, Sean, look at the comments. And in the comments, it's a bunch of people in Spanish talking about how great of a guy six nine is and how amazing he is. And hey, you did that shit to them Americans. You didn't do that shit to us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and it's like if you look at like a lot of six nines like really early stuff. I mean, he was appealing to like Eastern European rap fans and like, mm-hmm. you know, like the kids in Russia that like to listen to American rap. You know what I'm saying? That, that was his demographic. And like, yep. he was doing good at appealing to them. We could argue, and I've seen a lot of people make the argument about 6 9 is if we had stopped hating him early on, would he have become as big as he did? If we had just all, if we had just all been like, hey, bro, we're going to ignore him and all that's look over problem, here. Though. You can't get enough people to shut the fuck up. Yeah, you're right, that's true. It, it's, most, hard. it's hard to get a lot of people to shut the fuck up. All these issues, <laughs> when people really say they want to cancel somebody or whatever, usually just ignore. Yeah. Ignore it. You ignore that indifference. That's what kills people. The energy that you give, love or hate, that's going to keep fueling that fire and make the monster bigger, bro. Yeah, bro. Love or hate is just the, the, the same energy opposite of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? It. Yeah, but I mean, but it, it, it not, you can tell he knew that. You know what I'm saying? Like, to your point, you know, and he doesn't do it as much now, which I think is good, but kind of the latter years of his, his, I guess, the big point of his career, you could tell that he would just, just do shit. You know what I'm saying? Just to rile back up. Hey, bro, it's like, man, when people really like me or feel indifferent about me, nothing's happening for me. When people hate me, like I get the whole world in my hands, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. everything goes the way I need it to go. So, you know, you look at that and go like, which way, which way you going for? I'm going yeah. for the hate, you know what I'm saying? And I sent you this video of him the other day. Remember the video I sent you the other day? It's just crazy to look at now, right? Um, yes. Yeah, All right. So 6 9 got beat up at the LA Fitness like a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. And he used that time to make a music video while he was in Mexico of him. It was almost like, Spanish God's plan. It was kind of like the vibe I got from the video. You ever <laughs> seen the God's plan video? <laughs> okay, for the actual video, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Not the, the song, yeah. Not okay, the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. The video, the video yeah. yeah. The video was like Spanish God's plan, bro. Yes. Like, like God's plan True. in Mexico. True. You know what I'm saying? And just 6 9 being charitable, giving back to people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Looks like a really nice guy. And I sent it to Sean because I was like, Sean, look at the comments. And in the comments, it's a bunch of people in Spanish talking about how great of a guy 6 9 is and how amazing he is. And hey, you did that shit to them Americans. You didn't do that shit to us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you being cool to us and we're going to ride with it. I'm like, man, this is why they do it, bro. Like they can just slip into it. It's like he's seen both sides of it. That's what I'm thinking about. I mean, the American audience is like 90% hate, 10% probably love, right? Mm-hmm. Spanish audience is like the complete opposite. It's like 90% love, 10%, you know what I'm saying, hate. And so then I even think about someone from his viewpoint is like, man, Maybe that's the strategy, bro. I, I build my hate fire over here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Fan that shit. I use that attention to fuel my love fire over here. You know what I'm saying? Fan that shit. And the result is that I'm still hot and nobody really understands why. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm still- that's it, bro. That's exactly what it is, though. But I say it all the time, man. <sighs> so some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you wanna see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you wanna check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy don't forget the www or it won't work because jr gets into the details of looking at the data decisions that got made how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign this is real behind the curtains type of stuff so again go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash grammy if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself back to the video you have to like you have to build on both sides if you want to take advantage of it. You can't just have one side angry yeah. or one side loving you and that's it. Yeah, there's like, a lot to defend you at that point. It has to be yeah. two sides because they then like passively grow you through their ang- anger mm-hmm. and arguments around you. Mm-hmm. Right? So then you don't have to do anything. You just it's that uh what do they throw that stone and hide your hands behind yeah. your back and dip, like yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. So, like the perfect example I always use, 
like I did like this PR video series like early on in like the uh like our first like iteration of brand man network courses, right? And it was using one of the examples was the Super Bowl, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, and Coldplay. Yeah. Great performance. I loved it. And then, you know, you go home, you know, watch, finish the uh, finish the game, you know, go to sleep. Next day, oh, so many people think it's dope. So many people think it's dope. A couple of days later, there's this undercurrent started. People are mad at Beyonce. What they mad at Beyonce for? Oh, her Super Bowl performance. They mad it was so good. Like, what, like, what, what? I'm confused. <laughs> Next thing you know, they they talk about her outfit and her doing the fist and Black Panthers. Still, I kind of referenced this on that other episode. My unknown self, like I, I still just don't reference it and think of it that way because I don't think of that stuff negatively, you know. Because my background, I'm still like a little confused. Like, okay, people are mad Beyonce, oh Black Panther stuff. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I forgot that a lot of people look at the Black Panthers as, as terrorists and all that stuff. Uh, okay, cool. So, and it's the, like I think mostly in that case it was like right wing. Well, it wasn't even just right wing. It, I just let's just say white people in that particular case. Not the way things were polarized between races um, around that subject matter. Now, why do I draw the line that way? Because now I'm observing and I'm seeing some conversation. I see some hate comments, you know, about Beyonce. But of course, they go beyond Beyonce and start talking about the whole race and people. And it's like, dang, bro, like, hold up. Now mm-hmm. I'm starting to feel something. I'm not going to engage online, but I'm like, this is crazy. And now I'm paying attention. I'm aware. What's the point? I'm somebody who saw the performance, enjoyed it, cool, keep moving. To the point, I'm not overthinking it, Think of the berets or any of her outfit. You know, if I'm really paying attention, I might, oh, yeah, that's a nod to such and such. But, you know, other than that, just keep moving. Mm-hmm. But once you have these other people who hate, they're feeling some things in their bag. But that's not enough for them just to 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 hate, right? And be in their little echo chamber. You have to connect the dots and let the people who love find out about the people who hate. And now you got war. Mm-hmm. Now we can get this shit popping. And the conversation goes from, oh yeah, I love this, I love that, to this massive conversation that gets way more media, free media and attention mm-hmm. than it would have gotten by itself without any type of polarization. So. I always try to remind people, you need to strategically make sure the sides meet at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, you can fake hateful comments and then <laughs> like, you know, we really want to get to how yeah. some, some of this shit really works. Yeah. Sometimes people will fake like hate and create fake comments and things like that and then show it to the side that loves them. Mm-hmm. Right. Or sometimes people will show something that is with that. uh that people that would hate something, but it didn't happen for them to be aware or they'll just create that and make sure that those people that hate it see it, Mm -hmm. right? And fan that flame. Because when you think about it, yeah, things are free, access is everywhere, things get millions of views, but we're so segmented today. This thing could happen and we're in our own bubbles. The people who hate it, it's not for them. It's never gonna algorithmically, algorithmically get to them in a lot of cases, unless, Someone manually connects the dots. So, so are you saying the hate is bringing us together? In a weird way. Mm. I don't think that's the point of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing us together to create more hate. You know what I mean? But yeah, shit. Well, well it, brings it, the, it brings the two sides of the audience. Together. No, 1,000%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,000%. It brings both sides together. And you have to have that to create the conversation, that, which becomes your marketing campaign. If you're using this strategy, yeah, all right, and it's a scary strategy for many people to use. I would say even if you're not, I think it's I, I think like we're using extremes. You know what I'm saying to, yeah. to illustrate the example. We're gonna get into softer okay. examples. Okay, right, you're right. Let me step we'll back. Get into my bad, my bad. Especially our last one. Yeah.